Hi everyone. If this is your first time viewing my channel, I am Shan and this is Dream with Shan. And today's video is going to be about having ADHD slash ADD and transitioning or navigating through a professional program such as medical school. So stay tuned and I'll give you more information about that. Also, if you are not subscribed to this channel, please click the subscribe button so that you can be notified of future updates and just everything that we have going on. So make sure you subscribe and like this video and share if you find this to be informative. And also please engage. So comments in the section below, um, anything that you'd like to say or any insight that you'd like to provide. to this channel chronicles everyday life um, or my everyday life um, as a mom a medical student and a nonprofit organizer um, I have a nonprofit organization called conceive a dream in which um, our main focus is to help um, mothers transition from college to um, professional life as well as um, to graduate programs and to ensure that they are doing everything they need to succeed while in college and taking care of their young family I'm um, also I do chronicle my life as a medical student some of the things that I face um, being in a professional program as a mother and and I also talk about some of the experiences I had while I was in college as a mom as well. So it's been a while since my last upload. Um, but just to give you an update, I, I have had about three exam blocks since um, my last upload. So either, um, I think I'm right, so either three or two exam blocks. And so far, everything has been going um, well for me. Um, Studying has been a challenge, I will say, just because I do have um, a learning disability, if you could call it that. Um, so, and that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. I'm going to talk about how I navigate through medical school with um, ADD. Um, the title of the video is ADHD. Um, however, um, that's just the name that everyone gravitates to. Everyone knows or everyone's heard of ADHD, which is Attention Deficit Disorder, um, hyperactive form. I, however, do not have the hyperactive form. I have ADD, which is the inattentive form, meaning that um, I am easily distracted. Um, I tend to, my mind tends to wander. Um, it's hard for me to stay focused sometimes. And I really have to be very diligent um, when I am in a study environment to make sure that I'm able to retain all the information because of some of those traits. Um, again, um, ADHD and ADD inattentive form have many different varieties, um, many different aspects, but those are the ones that are very prominent um, in my life and what um, generally have a, an effect on my ability to study. So just to highlight some of the things that I've noticed as I've been trying to prepare for exams or just be an active member in my class and active meaning not that I'm raising my hand all the time or at all, but just being able to focus and to take notes and to listen um, to different cues that the professors are providing. Um, I noticed that, of course, I've always daydreamed. I've always, my mind has kind of floated and um, it's hard for me to kind of stay on track in class. So some of the things that I do is um, I try to keep my phone um, out of sight, out of mind. Um, I don't turn my phone off because being a parent, I can't really have the luxury of having my phone off in case of an emergency, not just with my son, but um, right now I have a grandparent that is ill and in a rehab facility. So I like to be able to be contacted in case anyone calls me um for either of those individuals as well as any of my other family members so i keep it out of sight out of mind but i don't turn it off um and when i keep it out of sight that keeps me from surfing the internet that keeps me from going on social media websites while i'm in class because that time should really be geared towards focusing um another thing that i've tried to do is i have tried to um pre-read either through videos or actual text um and that way when i pre-read the lecture topic um, it allows me to be more engaged because I feel like I know a little bit of I know a little bit more about the topic than I had um, had I not pre-read. So I may watch a pathoma video on the cardiovascular system prior to going to a cardiovascular lecture because that way when I am um, listening to my lecture, I hear maybe keywords that I may have heard from the video or um, I hear different um, phrases or different characteristics or different descriptions and I make sure to highlight those in the um, 
lecture um, outline or on my PowerPoint and things like that. So that keeps me engaged in class and that keeps me from doing other things. Um, what else do I do? I also make lists. I try to make lists um, very frequently of the things that I need to accomplish, either in class or at home or any type of list. So that way that makes me accountable of some of the things that I um, need to do because with um, ADD sometimes memory can be an issue and it's recall that um, is generally lacking so by making lists it um, allows me to be more responsible and to be more um, in tune with the things that I need to do. I mean one thing I will say is that I've noticed that in the academic setting is when the um, when my ADD normally is very um, highlighted or pronounced because I work um, or had a full-time job prior to coming into medical school and I don't feel like um, the distract being distracted and um, me daydreaming all the time was that of that much of a hindrance to my duties as an employee and as in my administrative role like I was able to get my work done I was able to do things and that also has to do with me being able to also interact with people on a constant basis whether it's people coming into the um, office whether it's patients checking in and checking out whether it's my other co-workers I always had something to do so I was not always distracted so I do notice that difference between working and being in a classroom setting um, has kind of had an effect on just my ability to ability to be as attentive um, in my classes as I would like to. Um, but no excuse um, when you find that you have a, um, a deficiency or anything like that, just working on it is the best way to try to improve your skills and things like that. So that's what I've been trying to do is make sure that I improve um, wherever I can. That's why I do my lists. I try to pre-read. Um, I try to make sure that I am taking away any type of distractions um, that could prevent me from actually being active and focused in class. So those are some things that I try. Um, I would love to know if you have, or if anyone watching this video, if you know someone who has ADHD, which is the Attention Deficit Disorder Hyperactive, or the ADD in a tenor form, how they navigate through school, work, or just life in general to make sure that they are at their optimum level and that they're um, doing everything um, that they need to to succeed in whatever arena that they're in. So if you have any information or have any tips, I would love for you to comment below or you can email me um, with that information because I'm always looking to, you know, try new things to make sure that I'm on top of my game. Um, so back to school, my exams have been going pretty good. So what I try to do before each exam, or I did this actually um, at the beginning of the term, I set goals for myself. Like I knew I had four exams, this block for each of the classes that I'm taking. I said, hey, um, I want to make this grade on this exam based on the material and how I felt comfortable with the material. Um, and I want to do this. I want to go over my lectures X amount of times. And what I do is, um, I'm going to see if I can find one of my lecture outlines and I'll add the clip. Um, I'll add a clip of it here somewhere so you can see that. What I do is I put boxes on my lecture printout slides to um, sh to let me keep track of how many times I've actually been able to review that material. And I also put the date on um, the slides as well. So I'll do a pre-read box, I'll do an in-class box, I'll do a first pass, second pass, and third pass. And what those, what those signify is after I've pre-read the material, I go to class and I listen and I highlight things that the professor says. Then um, sometime either that that week that the class has taken place or before the exam, I want to try to get through that packet again at least one, two, or three times. And I found that I've been very successful um, with my exam material when I get through the packet at least a second pass. So total that will be four times um, going over the material. Pre-read, in class, first pass, and second pass. Um, Sometimes I find that depending on how hard the material is or how easy, going through it only um, one additional time after my pre-read and being in class has been helpful, but it really just depends on the material in itself. Um, what else do I do? Um, like I said, I keep track of my goal on the exams. For the most part, what I do is I give like myself this outer galaxy type of goal, like, girl, you want to make a 99 or 100 on the exam. But then I give myself a realistic goal that... I would be content if I make a 85 or a 90 on the exam. So I would love to, you know, make that 99 or 100, but I'm not going to, you know, um, be stressed out to the point where I am sick. If I don't meet that goal, I'll be satisfied with the 85 or 90. That's how I do it, depending on what the material is, depending on how um, much 
I have to cover depending on how many other exams I have. So I kind of try to be really realistic with my goals because I don't want to, I don't want to be in a situation where I'm stressed out. Like I want to make sure that I'm retaining the information and I'm learning the information properly so that when I take my board exams, that information, that recall is there and not just trying to get the information down heavy for one exam. Um, one thing that I also have found to be very helpful for me with certain material is flashcards. Um, and I know a lot of people use Anki or Quizlet and things like that. But for me, for certain material, having a physical flashcard is better for me because I need to be able to hold that card. I need to be able to flip that card. And I'm a visual type person um, in some senses. And I remember like where I wrote that card in red or green and it was in the top left corner and it told me this and then it makes me recall additional information and things like that. So um, that's very helpful for me and that's what I found to be very helpful and allow me to be successful in some of my exams. Um, and for the most part, I've met all of my, I've met all of my um, general goals and I've even met some of my outer galaxy goals as well. So I, I'm just happy about that. And I can't complain. Um, but that is how everything is. That has been school so far. Life has been life. I have tons of life updates for you guys. But I'm going to save those for um, future videos. Um, so I have some really exciting stuff to share. Am I going to leave you guys with? I had an experience this week that was pretty, pretty crazy. Um, and it could have turned my day around. It was a lot of like, it was like a domino effect of crazy events that happened to me one day when I had a day full of things that I need to do, appointments here, class there. And I just had an experience that kind of, it started early in the morning and could have kind of like made my whole attitude change. But I stayed positive throughout the day. And even though there was a series of negative um, interactions and negative things that happened to me like I broke my key in my ignition I couldn't make it to appointments I had to like uber and lift everywhere the, so I spent a lot of money on that and a lot of money that I was allocating for other things um, my son was out of school so I had to coordinate all that kind of stuff um, but I eventually you know made it to everything I needed to make it to and my day um, while it could have turned really sour after all of those crazy events I continue to smile and I continue to just try to be positive about the whole situation because oh, I ended up meeting like a great physician during the process. He was very helpful, very informative, um, shared contact information with me, wanted me to, you know, continue to talk to him and things like that. And my outlook after that situation was, you know, had I let the series of events, you know, really deter me and really get me in a bad mood, like my key breaking my Uber rides not showing up on time, no one answering the phone when I needed their help, like being almost turned away from some of my appointments because of just crazy rules, then my day made a lot different because my attitude would have been different. People would have been less receptive to me if my attitude had been different. And maybe some doors that opened for me would not have opened for me had my attitude been different. So I want to leave you with just this little gem that no matter what you're going through, always try to see the the brighter side of things. And I know that's hard. I know that it's hard when we're when you're going through something and you know you're experiencing something that is unpleasant. I know it's hard. But just try to of uh, the fact that you are here for a reason. Everything is happening for a reason. It's building your character. It's making you stronger. So while today may not be the best day for you or yesterday was not the best day for you, you have tomorrow. And we don't know when when our last breath is or anything like that so just make sure that every day you know that you know this is your day to make an impact on somebody else this is your time to be the best person that you can be um and that could change your whole trajectory and that could also open doors for you that you never thought would have been open in given your situation so i just want to leave you guys with that um i also want you i i encourage you to you know, research, search, um, different in research information on attention deficit disorder, both the hyperactive kind and the in inattentive kind. Um, it's something that I've always experienced over my life, but um, it wasn't until the rigors of medical school that I actually decided to, you know, make sure that I was promoting my mental health as well as my physical health and emotional well-being and things like that. So um, find out more information about that or if there's any other type of learning disability or medical disability or anything like that that you're interested in, go out and get information on it because being informed is the best way that you can help yourself and help others. Um, if you have any tips again, please leave those in the comment section below. 
Also, if you have any advice that you want to give or a testimony that you want to share, I would love to hear it. And I will see you later. Bye.